Hello and welcome! In this tutorial, we are going to walk through the essential manual processing workflow in Artex Studio. If you want to move beyond the autopilot mode and have full control over your scan data to get better 3D models, you are in the right place. We'll cover everything from initial data preparation to the final export, all while explaining why each step is important. Let's get started! Now this initial step is very specific. It's only necessary if you scan with an Arctic EVA or Arctic Leo in high definition or HD mode. If you used standard definition or SD mode, or if you are working with the data from a scanner like the Arctic Spider 2, you can skip this section entirely and move straight on to the next step cleanup. Take a look at your workspace. If you see not only the raw HD data icon, but also separate HD scans, then your work here is already done. Next, you will continue working with the extracted HD scans and the original raw data will no longer be used. However, if you only see raw data, then you'll need to unpack it manually to access those high detail frames. To do that, simply select your scan, go to the Tools panel, click HD Scan Reconstruction and let Artex Studio do its work. Once this is done, you'll see your detailed scan appears and will be ready for cleanup. Now it's time for cleanup using the eraser tool. A clean scan is absolutely critical for accurate alignment and fusion later on. Our goal here is to remove everything that isn't the object we want to keep – the table, the floor, maybe your hands, or any other background noise. In the Editor tab, select the Eraser. The most efficient tool for removing large flat surfaces is the Cut-off Plane selection. You can eliminate the entire base with just a couple of clicks. For more precise work, the 2D Selection or Lasso tool are perfect for trimming away smaller, irregular pieces. Take a moment here to carefully isolate your object. Take a look at the keyboard shortcuts on the left under the tool. This will help you quickly select or change the surfaces you would like to remove. If you scanned an object by turning it over in separate scans, we need to align them into a single object. Go to the Alignment tab. The logical first step is to use the automatic alignment feature. It's powerful and often works well, especially if the images have a lot of overlap and geometry. Don't overlook manual alignment. It's often faster and more accurate. For an efficient workflow, use markers as a preliminary step before running the auto alignment. Using the point to point method, select at least three corresponding points on both scans. For best results, choose distinct features like corners or unique markings. Ensure these points are well spaced and do not lie in the same side of the object. Three pairs of markers are typically sufficient. Once set, begin the automatic alignment. This pre-selection step will significantly speed up the process. With our scans aligned, we move to one of the most important steps global registration. Think of this as a high-precision, fine-tuning algorithm. It goes through every single frame from all your scans and ensures they are all perfectly positioned relative to one another. 
This step is crucial for eliminating small errors and creating a seamless final model. In the settings, you'll also see an option for Key Frame Ratio or KFR. This simply determines how many frames are used as primary or reference frames. For most projects, the default setting is fine. If you run it and see any slight misalignment or doubled surfaces, you can try running global registration again with a slightly higher KFR. But be careful, a much higher value will significantly increase the processing time, so only increase it if necessary. Here is a powerful optimal step you can take before creating the final model. If you notice a lot of small floating bits of optical noise around your main scan, you can use the outlier removal to get rid of them automatically. This is a great way to clean up your data before fusion, but there is one important warning. If your object has very deep holes or cavities that were difficult to scan, this filler might accidentally remove that data. So if preserving those deep, hard-to-reach areas is crucial, you should skip this step. We now arrive at step 6, Fusion. This procedure converts the registered frames into a single, solid polygonal mesh. Upon opening the Fusion tool, you will observe that Artic Studio automatically selects the most suitable Fusion type based on the input data. This default selection is generally optimal. The main setting you'll control here is resolution. But you can't just pick any value. It depends on the error number from the global registration step. The rule is simple. The lower your error is, the lower you can set your resolution. A lower number for resolution will give you a more detailed final model. Use the on-screen charts to find the recommended resolution for your Artex scanner. These tables provide a great starting point. Following this guideline is important. If you apply a high detail resolution to a scan with high error, you will lock these mistakes into the final mesh, making them much more noticeable. Furthermore, it's important to know that you should not always select the maximum possible resolution, even if your error value is very low. A higher detail setting significantly increases processing time which is dependent on the specifications of your computer. Moreover, the final application for the model often does not require such an extreme level of detail. Therefore, you must find a practical balance between the desired model detail, which affects polygon count and file size, and the time required for the fusion operation. Please also remember that an increased resolution does not mean an increased accuracy of the mesh. Resolution defines the size of distinguishable geometric features, so do not increase the resolution in an attempt to improve accuracy. If your error value looks too high at this stage, the best move is to fix it now. Instead of continuing to fusion, just go back to the previous step. Try running the operation again, but increase the key FR setting a little. You may get a much cleaner final model this way. Finally, before executing the fusion, you should configure the fill hole setting. Holes are areas that were not captured or were inaccessible to the scanner. You can choose to fill all of them to create a watertight model or use other masses for more control. Alternatively, you can opt to leave them open by selecting none. This option is preferable if you require a model consisting exclusively of actual scan data, as the filling algorithm attempts to reconstruct surfaces by analyzing the bordering edges of the holes. Once you have your fusion, 
we proceed to Mesh Optimization, where your model can be further refined. In the Tools panel, open Mesh Optimization. First, remove small objects. This is perfect for automatically deleting any lost little bits of noise that might have been accidentally created during fusion. It's a quick final cleanup. The second tool is Mesh Simplification. This algorithm intelligently reduces the polygon count to decrease file size while preserving detail on complex surfaces. You can optimize by relative level or, if you have a specific requirement, you can target an approximate number of polygons for the final model. Simply enter the desired value here if you have a target in mind. It is very important to remember that any action in Autech Studio can be reversed. If the resultant simplified model does not meet your expectations, you can always undo this tab and try again with a different optimization level or target count until you achieve the desired balance. If your goal is a full color model, our next to last step is to apply the texture. This process takes all the color information captured during scanning and projects it onto our clean, optimized mesh. Starting with Artic Studio 20, the texture source will be chosen automatically, but you can always change it manually if necessary. Before launching the process, check the output texture size to ensure it meets your requirements. A larger size will be more detailed but will also increase the final file size. Once you're ready, click Apply. After the process is complete, you can fine-tune the appearance of the texture. Use the sliders for brightness, contrast and saturation to adjust the texture until you achieve the desired look. And finally, we export our work. You can access the export menu by going to the File menu and selecting Export Meshes, or by simply right-clicking on the model's name in the Workspace panel. From here, you can choose the right file format for your needs. Formats like STL, a standard for 3D printing, while OBJ or PLY are great if you are taking your model into game design or other 3D software, as they can include color and texture information. Choose your format, select a destination, give your file a name, and you are all done. And there you have it! A complete, step-by-step -step guide to manually processing your data in Arctic Studio. By following these steps, you gain full control over the process, allowing you to create clean, optimized, and highly accurate 3D models. Thanks for watching! If you found this helpful, please give the video a like and subscribe for more tutorials.